Hi, I'm Father Chris Alar, the Marian Fathers here at the National Shrine of the Divine Mercy, and welcome back again to Living Divine Mercy here on EWTN. You know, today's topic is very important. Addiction. It's so prevalent in our world today that it has unfortunately become a way of life for many. From something as benign as being addicted to a favorite book to as serious as being enslaved to drugs like fentanyl or opioids. We all know someone, if not ourselves, who are overwhelmed by it all. So what can we do? Often it seems there is no hope when our lives have been completely overtaken by someone or something that completely controls us, rendering us helpless to fight against it. This results in many giving up the fight and falling into despair or worse, even suicide. Our lives seem to lack meaning, being full of voids. And then, sensing the voids within us, we attempt to fill it with something that the world tells us is good, such as money or sex or power or all three. You know, these three things have become the gods of the world with a small g. In fact, that's why religious brothers and sisters take three vows. We take the vow of poverty to overcome the god of the world of money, we take the vow of chastity to overcome the god of the world of sex, and we take the vow of obedience to overcome the god of the world of power. But it is only when we empty ourselves of these things, not bring them in, that the world tells us is good, that we can make space for God to fill us with the Holy Spirit. It's like the jars at the wedding at Cana. They had to be empty so Christ could fill them with the Holy Spirit. However, many of us don't do this. We have a selfish inclination called concupiscence, which is the tendency to fill ourselves with pleasure and comfort and sin instead. Again, we are trying in the wrong way to fill these voids in our life that only God can fill. This is really what is at the heart of addiction, even though many health professionals refuse to acknowledge it. When we try to satisfy our hunger with something less than God, we will naturally be frustrated. And then in our frustration, we will continue to convince ourselves that we need more of that particular thing. So we will struggle to acquire it, only to find ourselves again dissatisfied. At this point, a sort of spiritual panic sets in, and we can find ourselves turning obsessively to this creaturely thing um, that can never, in principle, make us happy. In other words, we can never seem to satisfy the emptiness in us. And that's why the only answer for addiction is Jesus Christ. Even if an addicted person will not recognize that and will not call upon God to help them, you can. Please pray for God's grace and mercy upon those you know in need. It is the only way out because God's love is greater than sin and addiction. God has redeemed our broken nature, our fallen nature, our inclination to sin. But only if we accept that gift that he offers us can we be healed. Christ brings us this healing and salvation through the sacraments, which are actual grace, not just symbols. You know, although we are never fully freed from all concupiscence and inclination to sin, the grace of the sacraments lightens the load and keeps us going in this valley of tears. No matter how dark it may seem, God offers us a way out if we just trust his help for us. And one of the ways he offers to help us is through his saints. Saints are not God, and we do not worship them. 
But they are great examples of how to grow closer to God because that is exactly what they did in their life. So utilize this help that we have through our church, and you might be quite surprised at the outcome. For example, pray to St. Maximilian Kolbe for addiction to heroin. This great Polish saint died by lethal injection in the concentration camp at Auschwitz and so has been declared the patron saint of drug addicts and those who struggle by injection, such as heroin. Pray, for example, to Venerable Matt Talbot for the addiction to alcohol. This Irish laborer began drinking around the age of 15 and drank around uh, all the way to the age of around 30. He then went to confession, daily mass, and began to, quote, pray as intensely as he used to drink, end quote. That's pretty intense. You know, he spent hours every night reading scripture and the lives of the saints. He prayed the rosary, and his life was changed forever. Remember, we cannot pray the daily rosary and live in mortal sin at the same time. You know, pretty soon you will stop doing one or the other. For the addiction of sex or pornography, pray to St. Augustine. In his youth, he had a long relationship with a prostitute, even fathering an illegitimate son. He said, quote, grant me chastity, just not yet. Well, in time, he was granted it. He was converted by sacred scripture, by the preaching of St. Ambrose, and by the prayers of his mother, St. Monica. And we can do the same by praying for others that we know are in need. Actually, did you know that St. Monica herself had a weakness for alcohol in her youth. So she is a model for persistent prayer for wayward children and even difficult spouses, as she had one as well. Another drug unfortunately overtaken our world is opioids. We even here at our Marion Helper Center have been affected by this. And for this, we need to pray to St. Mark G. Tianjang. He was a Chinese doctor who treated himself with opium and became addicted. He was denied confession and communion at the time because he lived long before we knew the effects of drug addiction on brain chemistry and free will choices. But still, he lived as a faithful Catholic for 30 years, even without the sacraments, and died a martyr. Thankfully, we now know that frequent confession is very important for those struggling with this kind and really any kind of addiction. Then there's the founder of my religious community named St. Stanislaus Papchinsky, who is the patron saint of those in mortal danger, which most addicts are in mortal danger. He founded the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception as a dry order in response to the problems people were having at his time with alcoholism. And best of all is Our Lady. As a powerful intercessor, she has worked many miracles for those who are devoted to her. She can and will help addicts and those who love them. What a great support team. Always remember, to pray to does not mean to worship, but actually means to ask. And that is exactly what we are doing. We are asking help from those who know Jesus best and can offer us help by interceding to Christ for us. Wow, the beauty of our Catholic faith. Now, speaking of addiction, Let's sit down again with Jim Wahlberg from the famous Wahlberg family and hear how he experienced addiction and how its chains were broken through having faith in God's mercy. So as we mentioned, it's great to be back with Jim Wahlberg. Uh, as you may have seen on our show a while back, Jim told us a story about his struggles with addiction, but yet how he found God in the midst of his low points. So Jim, welcome back. It's great Thank to have you. you. Great to Thank have you, you so again. Much. And you know, Jim, talk to us a little bit about faith and addiction, a separate entities and yet how they can come together. Well, so I think that, you know, on, on the previous show, we talked about my journey, right? So my struggles and then my, my conversion and, um, 
And so I, I feel like my, and when it came to faith, it was always kind of a very personal to me. And so my prayer life became more intimate. It became deeper. It became that the connection and the feeling and having the presence of God in my life became more real for me. And so um, when I got out of prison, I was still, you know, I was doing my thing, going to meetings and, and trying to help people because, you know, the, the motto of 12-step groups is you can't keep it unless you give it away. Right. That's the only way you get the gift of recovery is by sharing it with others and the way it was shared with you. I had this beautiful gift of recovery and I needed to share it with other people. And so people were losing their children to opioid overdoses. We lost our own precious employee at the Marion Health yeah. Center. People would never guess that yeah. to opioids. Yeah. And uh, and so I made a film. I made a film um, called uh, If Only. And. The film was my contribution to a conversation. This film resonated with people. People were reaching out to me from all across the country. Would I come and show the film and help their communities have a conversation about addiction? And then, you know, we found addiction found its way into our home um, by way of my son. And after he had been hearing all his life, when it comes to drugs and alcohol, you can't afford to gamble because you come from a long line of people on both sides of your, your father family was, we talked in the first that show. can't handle this. Your father was yeah. a drinker. You were a drinker. Then you got and into several people, siblings, cousins, every, I mean, neighborhood, city, state, the whole place was a, was a mess. Right. And, uh, and my wife's had, she has experience in her, on her side of the family too. Um, and so I was, I would, he was warning him all his life. Like you can't afford to gamble when it comes to this, you stay away because it's the likelihood of you being able to do this in safety is not very good, but that's not the way addiction works. We were struggling with him and, uh, and we didn't know where to turn it. I thought I had all the answers, right? Cause I had recovery and I knew the 12 steps and I knew all these things. And, and, and sometimes it's not the message, it's the messenger. And he, sometimes kids don't want to hear it from their yeah. parents. They seem to believe a, a kid at school yeah. more than their own mom or dad. I was in the car driving my son from Florida to Rhode Island to an addiction treatment center for adolescents. Mm -hmm. okay. And meanwhile, my wife is home and she's watching EWTN. She's watching Life on the Rock. Great, great And for great the program. very, very first time, they had young people from a community, a Catholic faith-based community for addicts called Comunita Chinacolo. And it's an Italian community and Chinacolo translates to Senecal, which we know is the upper room. I'm driving, she's home watching, and she's, watch, and she's looking at these young people and she sees the joy in their eyes, right? And she says, this is God is presented me with this opportunity for my child. This is God's work. This is what my son needs is he needs God, right? And so she calls me. I found the place he needs to go. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the expert. I know what to do. Don't worry about it. I got this. And I drop him off at the place. And of course, that place doesn't work and he doesn't stay and, you know, a whole variety of things. So my wife, I, I left out an important part of the puzzle. <clears throat> We're driving. She's watching. They provide a phone number. She calls the phone number and the bishop answers the phone, Bishop Baker. Bishop Baker currently in Alabama, yeah. not Birmingham. Great man. Yeah. Bishop Baker answers the phone and he's telling her about the community. And he's telling her the miracles that are happening in community and that the lives that are being saved and, and the redemption and, the, and, God's, and all about God's mercy in this moment. If you're watching this, and you're hearing this and you have a child who's struggling from addiction, you can take it as a sign, right? Just like we got exactly. a sign. This is your sign. They're watching right? it for a purpose yeah. right now. This is your sign. This is your time. This is your answer, right? That, that, and there is an answer because for the longest time, um, and for a lot of people, they throw their hands up like, what is, what, what is our faith doing for these addicts, right? What are, what are we doing, right? And I meet bishops regularly that have never heard of community and don't know of a faithful solution yeah. to, this, to this malady. 
And let's put on our uh, screen right now um, the information, and we'll put it back at the end, so don't worry. But you can see right on uh, your screen now the information, the website, and the phone number, because this is just what your wife did. She just contacted them. So we invite you to, to, to do the same if you have a loved one struggling. So then what, what was your reaction then uh, when your wife told you that she had this conversation with this bishop? So, you know, I was kind of like, yeah, yeah, okay, honey, you know. I got this. I'm the expert in addiction. I'm the guy with, in recovery. I know what to do. And, and I was wrong because I didn't know what to do because no matter what I did and no matter what I suggested and no matter what direction I pointed, my son in, he was not interested in it, any of it. And so uh, ultimately we were left with, we gave him an ultimatum. We have this one place that, we're, that we think is the place for you. And when you're ready, we'll take you there. What it is, is introducing God and to fill those voids that the people have been trying to fill with drugs and alcohol, correct? So it's, it's the Eucharist, it's Mass, it's three rosaries a day, it's the Gospel. It's, and work detail. It's, it's hard work, right? It's learning to rely on God for everything because they live off divine providence. Nobody goes to the supermarket. They don't go to the clothing store. There are no phones. There are no TVs. There are no newspapers, right? It's a very hard and simple life, if but that it, makes sense. But at sense. the same time, they don't pay anything for this. No, it's free. Wow. If you're admitted, yeah. you, you don't pay anything. Yeah, and they're, and they're looking for ways to admit you. They're not looking for ways not to admit you, right? right? There's never been anything like this opioid epidemic. Yeah, fentanyl yeah. and opioid. And brokenness... It's everything. Yeah. It's what's happening to our world and people deciding to change everything about themselves. And like, it, yeah. it, it, there's a lot going on. It's a lot of pressure. But, but it, it, this is such a beautiful approach. Yeah. You personally got involved in helping to become um, one of the leaders in this group. Well, so not, I wouldn't call myself a leader by any stretch of the imagination. I would say that we are what's referred to as servants of hope. So we are families of this community that are that we have uh, decided that this community is important enough to us to want to give back to this community. So if somebody calls that main number, they'll be yeah. able to be put into touch with they'll, somebody. They, if they go on the website, yeah. they'll get directed to okay. somebody that they can yeah. contact or somebody will contact I them see. either way. Okay. And that process begins. So what I like to tell families is this, is that um, once you hear about community, once you pick up that call, that phone, or you go and visit that website, you are part of community, that we are here for you and that we will journey with you, right? And so, you know, because often the families are far more ready for but, their loved one to go to community than the person is. You know, as you know, Jim, from scriptures, this is how it was in the Christian community in the Acts of the Apostles. Right. This is how the very first Christians right. lived. They lived in community. They lived together. They lived uh, in support of one another. And they they brought what they had, be it uh, personal belongings or, or financial, but many times just themselves. It's not rehab in the traditional sense where you're going to go there and there's going to be a therapist and a counselor and, a, and people might be on medications and different things going on, right? This is living in community. This is prayer and hard work and living through the gospel. That's, and has there been quite a good success rate? Um, so here's what I like to say about community is that community is 100% successful if you do what you learn in community. Yeah, I, I, you know, in terms of statistics and numbers, I don't, I'm not a numbers guy. I know this, the community works. If you, if you do the things that you learn in community and you learn to behave in the ways that you learn in community and you keep your prayer life and you continue to pray the rosary and you continue to go to mass and you continue to receive the body of Christ and you continue to do these things, and living, live the community outside yeah. of community. And, you know, we, um, we'd like to mention at this time uh, on your screen is the information 
um, about Jim's book called The Big Hustle, where Jim um, reiterates in here the importance of finding uh, the, true, the true light um, in the midst of darkness and especially addiction. It's a great resource to mention here uh, to be able to help people getting through addiction. And then when you do suffer such a loss, there's also uh, my book that uh, is on your screen now about suicide, that there's hope for them and for you. A lot of these addictions end in suicide. Um, the number zero on your screen, if the book could help somebody that you know or love or yourself if you're going through not just suicide, but any kind of suffering or loss of a loved one. Uh, but Jim, any parting words that you could say to the, to the people that are struggling, either themselves or the ones that they love so much? You know, I just want to remind people that there's, nothing is too big for God. Nothing is too big for God, right? And, and, and God has no grandchildren. Your children are God's children, just like you're God's child, right? So let God do what God does, mm -hmm. right? And trust in him and, and trust that, that, that he is the answer, right? Um, you know, there's other things that we need to do, absolutely, right? But God is the answer for me. We're grateful um, God brought a greater good out of your experience and dependency and in, in addiction to now share this message with so many. Thank you. Thank you, Father. God bless you, God Jim. Bless you. And uh, know you're in our prayers and, and thank and you for you're being in mine as well. And thank, thank you for you. being part of our show. Well, thank you, Jim. It's always great to hear from you about using God's gifts to accomplish his tasks. Now let's hear that very same thing in scripture with Brother Stephen. When the words which David spoke were heard, they repeated them before Saul, and he sent for him. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are but a youth, and he has been a man of war from his youth. God, in his merciful love, always gives us the natural and supernatural gifts we need to accomplish the tasks that he sets before us, even those that seem most daunting. David knows that God is calling him to challenge Goliath, the giant Philistine, to single combat. First, David tries to equip himself with ordinary armor, but this does not complement the natural skills that the Lord has given him. Instead, with five stones and a slingshot, David clothes himself with the armor of the Spirit of God, trusting that God will be fighting with him. He tells Goliath, You come to me with a sword, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Whenever we face giants in life, such as serious illness, financial stress, or human faithlessness, we can trust that God has given us the natural abilities we need to face the situation, as well as the spiritual aid to bring good out of evil. In the end, we will still be standing strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might, as Ephesians says. I think most people kind of get silly and say, oh, I'll give up chocolate or I'll give up alcohol. That's all well and good, but see Lent as a time for spiritual preparation and development. Uh, go to Mass each day, uh, which is a wonderful habit to get into. I also like to do a little more spiritual reading than normal. I highly recommend the Diary of St. Faustina, read a few pages each day, and most of all, the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Uh, this is the Bible of everything you ever want to know about your Catholic faith. And as the saying goes, you can't truly love something if you don't know it. So that's what I recommend for a really good and enriching and fulfilling Lent. I will be spending more time reading religious literature. And during Lent, I like to park on the furthest spot available in any parking lot, whether it's like the grocery store or work. And then I'm going to spend um, a lot less time bothering my colleague, Kevin. <laughs> and that's it. I'm probably going to recommit to the daily rosary. 
really try to get back into some good habits and give up some old bad habits and, and just do what I can to make sure that I do the prayer each day that I need to do, especially for the work that we do around here. So Father Chris recently said, being a workaholic is not good. So for Lent, I'm giving up working hard. What am I giving up for Lent? I think I'm gonna give up yelling at cameraman Giuseppe for never working hard. At the end of the hour, I went before the Blessed Sacrament, and, like the greatest and most miserable of wretches, I begged for his mercy that he might heal and purify my poor soul. Then I heard these words, My daughter, all your miseries have been consumed in the flame of my love, like a little twig thrown into a roaring fire. By humbling yourself in this way, you draw upon yourself and upon other souls an entire sea of my mercy. Poor soul, I see that you suffer much and that you do not even have the strength to converse with me, so I will speak to you. Even though your sufferings were very great, do not lose heart or give in to despondency. But tell me, my child, who has dared to wound your heart? Tell me about everything. Be sincere in dealing with me. Reveal all the wounds of your heart. I will heal them, and your suffering will become a source of your sanctification. Well, thank you again, everybody, for joining us. If you want to see the full interview with Jim Wahlberg, and it's great, visit our new streaming site, divinemercyplus.org. And please join us next week, because the goal of overcoming all these trials is to become a saint. And that's our topic next week. Until then, may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.